Hello. In today's video we would like to introduce you to our Dark Pact Occultist build. The Dark Pact is an interesting spell that sacrifices a small portion of your maximum life and deals chaos damage in the area around you. You can also summon skeletons and sacrifice their life instead, which will greatly enhance the damage of the Dark Pact by a few percent of their maximum life. With just a minor investment into minion life, you can get very high amounts of added damage for this spell, and you can boost it further with the anomalous quality of the Dark Pact gem. It is often more beneficial to prioritize the levels of Summon Skeleton gem instead of Dark Pact to improve your overall damage. You can use certain unique items to greatly enhance the quality of your gem, but at lower budgets it is much better to focus on regular damage scaling via spell damage, cast speed, or critical strike damage. Increasing minion life is very important for both versions of the build. When you use this spell on your skeletons it will chain two additional times, hitting your enemies two more times with each cast. The skeletons will always try to follow your opponents, so you don't have to reposition them too often. Sacrificing your life deals less damage, but it can be used against weak monsters to speed up your clear. The Dark Pact has a rather low base critical strike chance, but it is still fairly easy to reach a 100% critical strike chance with the abundance of power charge and critical strike notables on the passive tree. It also has great base cast time speed which makes the gameplay very smooth. You will have plenty of avoidance in the form of evasion and block chance. The petrified blood is also very good, as it will split incoming damage from hits into a damage over time effect, which your constant life leech and solid region will greatly help with. It has decent clear speed, but using two skills to clear a pack will always be slower than using just one. In most cases a single cast and the occultist's explosion will be enough for smooth clear. This combo has excellent and easy to execute single target damage due to overlaps and an insane amount of added damage from your skeletons. The build is very cheap to assemble, as it uses an uncommon combination of minion life and critical strike modifiers. Certain uniques make it stronger, but they are not required. There are no mandatory unique items for the build to work, but some of them are simply very efficient at improving your damage. Improving the quality of your main gem is the best way to scale your damage, but it requires a high budget and compromises your defenses. Divinarius is a very strong weapon for this build, it grants tons of damage for your spells, improves the area of effect so the overlaps are more likely to happen, and grants critical strike multiplier against bosses while making your critical strike more reliable during mapping. Extra life recovery is also helpful, especially if you use dark pact without your skeletons for clear. The devouring diadem solves all problems with mana regarding sustain and reservation. With the eldritch battery, you will use your constantly recharging energy shield instead of mana to cast spells. A proper rare helmet will be better in the end, but you probably will have to forfeit the Tempest Shield without it. Replica Dragonfang's Flight is a very powerful amulet for this build, improving the levels of skeletons by 3 grants more damage than raising the Dark Pact gem levels itself. This amulet also lowers your attribute requirements and increases your reservation efficiency. Anathema allows you to use much more curses than usual, and generates power charges when you cast them directly. It also improves your overall cast speed. Try to look for useful corrupted implicits, as the original energy shield it provides is rather weak. It is very strong pick against bosses, but for regular mapping you won't need all those extra curses anyway. Diala's Malefaction grants 30% quality for socketed gems, which grants an immense bonus to Dark Pact. The remaining support gems also get benefits from additional quality or levels. It grants no defensive value. Use Tainted Currency to link and color it. You can roll over white sockets, which are often being sold underpriced on the market. You will need a perfect roll on the quality modifier paired with the Diala's Malefaction to reach maximum efficiency of the Dark Pack's alternative quality. With such a setup, all your previous investments into Skeleton's life are much more efficient. If your skeletons can't reach at least 20k maximum life, it is not worth it and you should spend that money on your remaining gear instead. Use modifiers that require zealotry aura to gain a lot of damage from this jewel. 
You can also find very useful modifiers that require vitality or precision, such as flask charges on crit or life leech. With this combination of unique jewels you can borrow a very useful notable from the Necromancer Ascendancy. The Bone Barrier grants 20% more minion life, which means a lot of damage for our Dark Pact. You should look for increases to spell, chaos, and minion damage, additional levels of your gem levels, critical strike chance and multiplier, cast speed, or increased minion life. Both Dark Pact and Summon Skeletons are minion skills, so try to avoid just the Chaos spell skill modifiers. Defensively you should focus on getting enough resistances and maximum life. Additional life regeneration is also useful to have. At first you can use a rare wand that improves your minion's spell gem levels and grants you spell damage, cast speed, or improves your critical strikes. An insanely good rare wand would provide more damage than the Divinarius, but at that level of investment it's not worth giving up on the quality of life it provides. You should use special minion-focused bases to be able to obtain specific modifiers. Look for additional levels for minion gems, minion life, increased spell or minion damage, and potentially some maximum life. You can also get one with lots of spell damage and critical strike modifiers, and craft additional levels for the socketed support gems while socketing your skeleton setup in there. Try to look for a double-influenced armor with modifiers that grant you additional critical strike chance for spells and frenzy charge generation. It should also grant you physical damage mitigation. Avoid life modifiers as it significantly raises the price and you can simply use the life mastery to get similar amounts of life. With a rare helmet you have to fix mana through some extra passive points spent on mana region and reservation efficiency, but it can provide you with tons of maximum life, two additional gem levels for your spells, and a reduction of the physical damage you take. Your rare boots are rather simple, look for high maximum life, movement speed, and tons of resistances or attributes. They can also make you immune to freeze, grant onslaught on kill, or help you avoid ailments. Here you should also look for maximum life and resistance. They can also grant you a lot of various increased damage bonuses. You should use Eldritch Implicits that grant you a chance to unnerve enemies and obtain a rather scarce source of life leech. Here you can heavily focus on maximum life and resistances. It can also greatly improve your flask sustain. As always, try to use the Stygian Vice base so you can use an additional Abyss Jewel in your setup. The Abyss Jewel put in the Stygian Vice can improve your and your minion's life, but also grant you resistances, cast speed, or critical strike multiplier. It is also a great place to look for ailment avoidances or the immunity against corrupting blood. Your rare ring should provide maximum life and some resistances, but it can also greatly improve your damage in various ways. It can increase your chaos damage, cast speed, or critical strike multiplier. Automate the curse application, or improve the life of your minions if you use minion-specific bases. Your jewels can greatly improve your damage and maximum life. They are also great examples of the unusual modifier combinations being useful for this build, as the minion life is never associated with critical strike builds. On a large cluster jewel you should look for three notables that would boost your chaos damage. The unspeakable gifts notable grants you a small chance to explode enemies you kill, which is very useful if you don't automatically curse enemies for the sake of profane bloom. Use the specific combination of minion notables to greatly improve the maximum life of your skeletons, and thus your damage. You can also use critical strike notables if you severely lack that modifier. Bottled Faith is a great offensive flask for every build, especially for ones that rely on critical strikes. It creates a large consecrated ground effect upon use, and you will deal significantly more damage against enemies standing on it. Taste of Hate is an amazing defensive flask to use in this build. It reduces the physical damage you take from hits by converting it to cold damage, which you can easily reduce with your cold resistance. For the remaining magic flasks we suggest using Life Flask with Bleeding Removal Quicksilver with Cast Speed Bonus and a Diamond Flask with Increased Critical Strike Chance. Dark Pact sacrifices a portion of your skeleton's life to deal chaos damage in the area around them. 
It also chains to nearby skeletons, dealing the damage again. You can use it on yourself, but the damage will be lower. The chain support increases your overall damage but doesn't improve the damage of the single hit, which is why it is only worth using it if you are close to the crit cap even without the increased critical strike support. The Divergent Void Manipulation support can be used to get Life Leech, but the Awakened version grants more damage. The Summon Skeletons creates minions which life you can sacrifice to deal more damage. Their attacks are very weak, but they follow your enemy so you can focus on casting Dark Pact effortlessly. Higher gem levels are very important for better maximum life scaling. You can also use faster casting support to make it smoother if you have any empty sockets to spare. Grace grants you a lot of evasion rating and scales it further. You can also use the Determination Aura instead, but without lots of armor on your rare gear it won't be as effective. Zealotry grants you spell damage and critical strike chance. You can also benefit from powerful Watcher's Eye modifiers while affected by this aura. Petrified Blood spreads out incoming damage and allows you to reserve half of your life without any downside. It enables the Pain Attunement Keystone for a massive damage boost. Tempest Shield grants you a decent amount of spell block chance and makes you immune to shock ailment. All those auras should be socketed in the Devouring Diadem to reduce their mana reservation. If you are using a regular rare helmet, use the Enlightened Support for the similar effect. Vitality is a very helpful aura that grants you a lot of life regeneration. The Life Leech and Regeneration is your main way of life recovery. Spells obviously don't need an accuracy rating but the additional critical strike chance from the precision aura is very useful. The arrogant support causes linked auras to have a better effect, but reserve life instead of mana. If you are using a rare helmet, you can also use the clarity aura in this setup. This curse lowers the chaos resistance of the affected foe. You can also get it via the curse on hit modifier on your gear, which grants only half of the effect, but makes it automatic. Assassin's Mark grants you a lot of critical strike chance and damage against marked enemies. Only one target can be marked at the same time. It also generates power charges for you. Enfeeble is a defensive curse that lowers enemy damage and accuracy rating. You can also use the punishment if you prefer more damage. Casting that many curses manually would be troublesome, but you can automate it with the Arcanist brand. It will cast all linked spells in a quick succession. It is a very useful setup if you fight bosses frequently. Regular enemies shouldn't live long enough to be cursed with all those spells anyway. For regular mapping you can use a despair on hit modifier on your gear, and cast the assassin's mark manually. Flame Dash performs a quick teleport in a specific direction, leaving a burning ground on the way. It can store up to 3 charges. Withering Step grants you an elusive buff and applied withering stacks to nearby enemies. It shares cooldown with other movement spells, so you won't be able to use it right after using the Flame Dash. Frost Shield creates an icy barrier that drains a portion of your energy shield to power up. It reduces the damage you take while you stand inside of it. Steel Skin absorbs big portions of the incoming damage and removes bleeding ailments on you. Replace it with the bone skin from the Forbidden Flesh and Flame Jewels later on. Killing all bandits for two additional passive points is the best option. You can also help Alira for a minor damage and utility boost in the early game, and refund it later when you obtain the proper gear. As your major pantheon power we recommend using the Soul of the Brine King. It will grant you immunity against freeze and prevent stun locks. Reducing the chill effect is also very useful to have. The minor pantheon power choice is very flexible. We suggest using the soul of Shikari to reduce the damage you take from poison and other chaos damage over time effects. You can start using your main setup fairly early into the campaign, although scaling critical strikes will be rather hard at first. Use the Petrified Blood Aura to enable Pain Attunement for a massive damage boost very early on. Don't forget to pick up Summon Skeleton's Gem as soon as possible to keep their life levels relevant to the content you are running when you get the Dark Pact Gem from the quest. It is also worth getting used to the skill mechanics as fast as possible, it is a bit unusual gameplay. 
Except for the minion notables, the passive tree is fairly usual for a crit spellcaster. You will pick up plenty of maximum life, spell damage, critical strike, and aura reservation notables. The spiritual aid is very useful, as items and other passives with bonuses to the minion's maximum life tend to also boost their damage. It is also worth mentioning that the popular path of building tool doesn't automatically associate your skeleton's life with your dark pack damage, you have to input their maximum life manually into the configuration. The cluster jewel setup is very efficient, as there are simply not that many notables on the regular passive tree that would boost non-poison chaos damage, or increase the maximum life of your minions. That should be enough to make your journey with this skill successful. If you have any questions or suggestions, we encourage you to leave a comment. Have a good day, and see you in the next video.